Okay, in this video today, I wanted to show you how we can use the PicoScope software to detect errors in your CAN bus data. So we have here a waveform that was taken using a breakout box at the DLC where we have the CAN high and the CAN low signals on channel A and channel B. And if you need a reminder of how to do that, I have a video that shows you how to capture that waveform. Now if we zoom in, you'll see that we have our individual data packets here. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is turn on the CAN decoder tool, which is part of the PicoScope software. So come down here and turn on serial decoding. We'll create a decoder and select CAN. And we could choose channel A or B here because I have both of them. In fact, if you think you may have errors on one line or another, you may want to do this to both of them. But we'll start with channel A, which in this waveform happens to be CAN high. We we'll want to make sure and associate the right channel with the right CAN line. And I'll select CAN high right here. And CAN high typically switches between 2.5 and 3.5 and volts, so I would put my threshold at 3 volts right in the middle. And if I was using CAN low, I would put my threshold at 2 volts. Now I'm going to want to put my hysteresis at 0. Essentially what that does is the higher the hysteresis is, the less sensitive the software will be to detecting errors. And then I'll come down here. I need to make sure that the baud rate is always at 500 kilobaud. That represents the baud or the bit rate for high-speed CAN. And I'm going to display the packets in the graph in binary and leave the table in hex and click OK and OK again. Now what this should do is bring up a chart that shows me all of my binary bits here, all of my zeros and ones. In the other video, we explained what each of these means. But the important thing here is we're looking for errors. This light blue section over here is the cyclic redundancy check, and this is where the CAN chip runs an algorithm to basically check the validity of this message to make sure that it came through correctly. And then this yellow bit, or this last bit right here, is the acknowledgement bit, which means that right here other modules are acknowledging the validity of this message as well. So how we can find errors is we can come down to this table at the bottom. You'll notice that I can see one red line here that says it was not valid. Now if I want to see how many errors there were in this capture that I have, I could just sort this column. And it turns out I have four message packets that the PicoScope believes were invalid. Now I can double click on each of these and it will bring me to that point. So here's the first one. And as I look at this, I don't immediately see a major problem with this data packet. The only thing that I can see that might have caused problems is right here the voltage changed a little bit. And that may have caused it to not pass the threshold that we set for it. So as I zoom in here, and sure enough, it looks like I'm missing a digit here. The PicoScope was not able to identify whether this was a 1 or a 0 at this point. Now just because the PicoScope doesn't identify it, that does not mean that the other ECUs on the vehicle weren't able to read this message. In fact, I would suspect that they were able to. That's why we have a 0 in this acknowledgement bit place. Let's take a look at these others here. And when I click on the second error message, I can see right away why this one might have had an error. Looks like there's some kind of noise, possibly electromagnetic interference that occurred right here. And even though all of the digits seem to be decoded here, it looks like this threw the system off because the acknowledgement bit didn't occur when the PicoScope software expected it to. Here's another one that has some voltage fluctuation in it. And here's another one that has some noise that appears to have caused some problems with this message. So other than these four packets here, the software determined that the rest of these messages were valid. It does not necessarily mean that the other ECUs on the vehicle were unable to interpret these messages. Like I said earlier, if I increase the hysteresis number on my decoder, it will become less sensitive to these errors, and it might not have even considered these errors. In addition to that, even if there were a few errors like this, it would probably not set any DTCs. If you have a communication DTC, you'll probably have many more errors than this, and it's possible that those errors might only show up on the CAN high or on the CAN low side of things. So it might be a good idea to check both when you're trying to diagnose a data bus issue. I hope that this video was helpful and that you find this tool useful. And maybe it helps you to understand the condition of the signals on your CAN bus.